Greetings and salutations, everyone. My name is Andrew Kirkhoff, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're talking about my Week 11 running back rankings for the 2020 fantasy football season. On today's episode, of course, we're going to be talking about all things running back. But before we do that, I want to talk about a couple extra waiver wire pickups that I did not mention yesterday. A couple will be from Monday night's football game between the Vikings and the Bears. But then after that, I want to mention a couple players that, as this week has already progressed, a couple players that should be picked up and should be mentioned that I did not mention yesterday. Then after that, of course, we'll talk about our Week 11 running backs, starting off with matchups, talking about which running backs have the most advantageous matchups this week and which defenses are giving up the most points to opposing running backs in a half PPR scoring format on average per week this season so far. Then after that, of course, we're talking about my half PPR running back rankings on the week. Of course, rankings are always subject to change. Now, for those of you who are trying to stay up to date on my latest rankings, of course, you can go down below in the description of the video and find my Patreon. I'm making extra content there, weekly rankings, flex rankings, all that kind of jazz, uh, extra private stuff that I don't really post on the channel. Now, outside of that, while you're down in the description, make sure you click that subscribe button. Again, we are on our way to 35K. I cannot thank you guys enough for your support. So again, if you're trying to stay up to date with my latest content, 2020 fantasy football, click the subscribe button. It'll be in your inbox. Outside of that, make sure you click the like button down below. Helps us out a lot in terms of growing the community as we continue for the rest of the 2020 season. The Discord link is also in the description in the first line for those of you who are trying to find a community base in terms of talking and all things fantasy football so if you're interested you can click that link uh, and join now that we've covered all that we can go ahead and move on and talk some waiver wire pickups for week 11 a couple extra guys that i wanted to mention now of course monday night football game uh it kind of went as planned of course the minnesota vikings were going to win that is three in a row for them they are on a hot streak while of course the chicago bears are on a slide of what they were five and one now they're going to be five and five they're on quite the slide going into the bye week but of course uh, a couple players that i wanted to mention of course uh, the only guy that really in my opinion stood out that maybe anybody is interested in potentially this week is Kyle Rudolph. Uh, if in fact Irv Smith is going to miss more time, then Kyle Rudolph against the Dallas Cowboys could be a bit, you know a pretty decent pickup and play as a streaming option at the tight end position. Um, outside of that, really the Chicago Bears on a bye week and Minnesota they only have three other viable options, which is Justin Jefferson who played well, Adam Thielen who played well, and uh, Dalvin Cook who had 30 carries and. Uh, had a monster game and we're going to talk about him in a little bit but outside of that a couple other waiver wire pickups alex collins um yesterday i forgot to mention him mainly because i thought uh the seattle seahawks and the arizona cardinals were going to have a sunday game it's a thursday game alex collins will probably be the starter once again for the seattle seahawks mainly because i don't think chris carson on a short week is going to play i don't think they're going to bring him back this week uh so that's probably the reason why you should go pick up alex collins he's a one week pick up and play as he had majority of the touches and of course a touchdown against the los angeles rams i think outside of him kyle rudolph those are pretty much the only other two that i didn't mention yesterday of course there are a couple players that i did mention yesterday that are getting injured you can go ahead and wipe those guys off the board uh like drew lock specifically uh and those kind of guys so Outside of that, we should be good to go. Let's start talking about some Week 11 running back matchups going into the week. We have ourselves, of course, the Detroit Lions giving up the most points to opposing running backs in a half PPR scoring format with 33.17 per week to opposing running backs. Though they are, you know, been getting gashed here and there as of the last couple of weeks, especially this past week with three touchdowns to opposing running backs. Antonio Gibson had two, J.D. McKissick had one on top of, of course, both those guys catching a total uh, plus of 10 plus catches. So again, in a half PPR PPR, Detroit Lions are getting torched. They will take on Mike Davis. That team will probably not have Teddy Bridgewater, which will lean on the running game even more. Uh, it's interesting to see how exactly that is going to transpire this week, but it's a great match to say the least. Of course, the Houston Texans are still giving up a lot of points to opposing running backs on the ground mainly because they're giving up the most yards uh, just this past week if i'm not mistaken nick chubb and cream hunt combined for 230 rushing yards that total unbelievable uh, of course the green bay packers have always been giving up a lot of yards this season just this past sunday we had ourselves of course mr james robinson over 100 yards that doesn't seem out of the ordinary for him as he's been 99 plus rushing yards each of the last week but this upcoming week they take on a trifecta of running backs whether it is naeem hines wilkins jonathan taylor whoever wants to step up we're just gonna have to wait and see how that entire thing pans out carolina will take on detroit deandre swift has been playing out of his mind as of late finally got his first start this past sunday and definitely won the job outright we move on, of course, the Las Vegas Raiders take on Clyde edwards alaire and Le'Veon Bell. Those matchups are nice. Playing against the Raiders is always a, 
a thing that you want to go ahead and take advantage of. But unfortunately, I don't know if Clyde Edwards is going to be able to, considering he has been not he hasn't been given a lot of opportunity. But then again, it is still a good matchup. They're still giving up a rushing touchdown per game to opposing running backs this season, uh, and a pretty good amount of yards, whether it's on the ground or through the air. So just as long as they want to kind of bottle it up and maybe run the ball a little bit more this week. I know they might be missing their right and left tackle, um, but we'll just have to see how that transpires. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars will take on Pittsburgh. That is a fantastic matchup, of course. Uh, the New York Jets coming off of the bye will take on the uh, Los Angeles Chargers. I think Kalen Balaj, as he's already proven the last couple of weeks, um, he, he is pretty much the number one until Austin Eckler comes back. Big body, big frame, just running downhill consistently, getting yardage for that team. And that offensive line has been playing better and better, especially as it pertains to running the ball. Uh, the Tennessee Titans could not stop the running backs last week. Naeem Hines torched them, of course. I think Baltimore, if they wanted to go ahead and spread the love or at least give it to one singular back, they could have a relevant fantasy option, but until then, it's just really not wise to trust any of them. The New York Giants are on a bye week. The Kansas City Chiefs take on Josh Jacobs, who earlier this season already torched them and will have another opportunity of doing so. Now, in terms of the tougher matchups going into this upcoming week, the New Orleans Saints, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Indianapolis Colts, the Atlanta Falcons, these are teams that are stopping the run. Interestingly enough, the Falcons will take on the Saints. These are two of the top running backs, Todd Gurley and Alvin Kamara, who just reclaimed the number one overall running back spot in terms of overall points in a half PPR scoring format. So that looks nice for them. Pittsburgh will take on James Robinson, another one of these top backs. And the Indianapolis Colts will take on Aaron Jones, another top back. This is going to be tough. There's a lot of good running backs that have pretty difficult schedules going into this upcoming week. And even with that said, you got to start your studs. You got to play them. You got to let them ride it out and hope that they can at least fall into the end zone or take on the matchup head first and potentially beat them straight up. Either way, just kind of giving you guys some perspective as to which of these matchups are the tougher ones. Again, a lot of these teams give up a lot of points, especially look at the Eagles. They give up at least one rushing touchdown to opposing running backs per week this season. We'll talk about that in an extended variety when we talk about Nick Chubb, the thumbnail today, but just giving you some extra perspective uh, going into this week. All right, now that we've covered that, we can go ahead and move on and start talking about my top 36 running back rankings on the week. Before we begin, again, rankings are always subject to change. It is going to change as the week progresses. There are going to be injuries. There are going to be things that, in my mind, probably after I post this video, I will have already changed something. But that's just how it works. I'm always changing in my mind. But regardless, uh, remember, there are going to be injuries that happen. We just have to you know, go with the flow, get ready to pick up a handcuff here and there uh, outside of that. There are four teams on by, so I don't want to hear anybody say, because somehow all of you, there's some of you out there that still ask, hey, where's Clyde Edwards, especially last week? It's like, they're on bye week. Like, what would it be? Come on, guys. So the, the four bye weeks, Giants, Bears, 49ers, Bills. Don't ask about those players. Thank you very much. All right, let's get into it, shall we? My number one running back on the week begins with Dalvin Cook. Even though he didn't have one of the better games, he didn't drop a 35-point bomb and didn't score a touchdown this past week, he was still relevant because he touched the ball 34 total times. This is a run-first team. Again, I mentioned earlier, they won four in a row. And the fact that he ran the ball 30 times for 96 yards against the Bears defense, who keyed in on him, which allowed, of course, Kirk Cousins to succeed as much as he did, that is going to be the benefit of having such a powerful back in the backfield dominate in terms of on a downly possession. So he did get shut down early in the first half, found more success in the second half as they made adjustments, caught the ball four times. I'm happy with that. This upcoming week, they take on the Dallas Cowboys. Of course, the Dallas Cowboys coming off a of bye week have been preparing for this matchup, but in terms of how many points they've given up to running backs, just looking at the last couple performances, Kareem Hunt went for 71 and two touchdowns, uh, while Dernis Johnson in that game went for over rush the 90 rushing yards. Uh, Kenny Drake went for 164 and two touchdowns in that game, and uh, Antonio Gibson went for 128 and a touchdown. So, of course, the Dallas Cowboys, they may be getting a new quarterback this week, but they're going to be still playing the monster of Dalvin Cook, potentially trying to pick up their fourth win in a row. We have Alvin Kamara as my number two running back. So again, Alvin Kamara does not run the ball a lot. That is not where he finds his value. Of course, it is in the PPR game and it is with touchdown upside. This past week, eight total rushing attempts for 15 yards, two rushing touchdowns. It's fine. Looks great. Seven receptions on eight targets, 83 receiving yards, and a touchdown. It does not even matter that the quarterback position is going to change, whether it goes to Taysom Hill and or to um, Jameis Winston, because the entire offense is facilitated around getting Alvin Kamara the ball because that is the most that's their most successful play on a downly basis. It does not matter whether it's third and twenty or first and five. It doesn't matter. It's always go to Kamara, and he has been able to deliver on it. Had thirty one point three points with three touchdowns this past weekend, and of course plays against the Atlanta Falcons. I know they don't give up a lot of points to opposing running backs. That's mainly on the ground. 
Algun Kamara has had a lot of success in the past couple games against Atlanta through the year as he typically has. This should be a, uh, a pretty fun back and forth matchup. I'm excited to see what happens here this week. Josh Jacobs is our number three. So again, Josh Jacobs takes on the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, he played against them a couple weeks back, dropped the 20 bomb because he found the end zone multiple times, and that is great. Just this past week, it looked resurged. Uh, obviously, the week prior in week nine was dealing with a knee injury and uh, a little bit of an illness. Came back this week, 21 carries for 112 yards, two rushing touchdowns. And the biggest factor, in my opinion, which really elevated um, Josh Jacobs' overall fantasy relevance was four targets, four receptions, 24 yards. Though the yard per carry av- or yard per reception average for Josh Jacobs wasn't superb, the fact that he had himself, you know, four catches, where typically in the last couple of games has not caught the ball at all, that just gets him an extra layer of depth an extra layer of security in terms of being able to get points. They play against the Kansas City Chiefs, giving up the 10th most points to opposing running backs. Um, also, the fact that he caught four passes was mainly due to the fact that Jalen Rashard left the game with an injury. So, if in fact we see that that's going to transpire and we're going to have Jalen Rashard out once again this week, I think, of course, Josh Jacobs becomes even more of a viable back in the great matchups in which he's already succeeded in multiple times in his career. Exciting to see. Nick Chubb is our number four for this week. And again, Last week, I anticipated him coming back and being a monster, mainly because they wouldn't have him return unless he was fully healthy and ready to go. And my goodness, is he healthy and ready to go. 19 carries, 126 yards, a rushing touchdown, ran out of the one-yard line, couldn't have had an extra rushing touchdown. But again, uh, that was against the defense that a lot of us know. The Houston Texans cannot stop the run. Even Kareem Hunt had 19 carries. So they both had themselves 19 touches, and they both dominated against that defense. So, of course, not a surprise. Now, The question remains, what can Nick Chubb potentially face this week? And what can we anticipate in terms of the matchup against the Philadelphia Eagles? i got a juicy stat for you. In the last five games, the uh, the Philadelphia Eagles have allowed five touchdowns to opposing running backs. So, of course, he's going to find the end zone. This is a team that wants to run the ball. It'll be played in Cleveland in probably not great weather conditions. But that honestly leans in a direction of the Cleveland Browns getting their all-pro guard back this past week. The offense has looked a lot better. I think they're going in the right direction. And of course, Nick Chubb just has to continue what he's doing. Again, in the last three games that we've seen him play, it's 20-point bombs all the way around because he's scoring and getting huge yardage counts because he is one of the better running backs in the National Football League in a scheme that wants to run the ball and facilitate around him and Kareem Hunt. So again, he's been dominating, and I'm 100% confident in him this week. We have Derrick Henry as our number five. Now, Derrick Henry has had back-to-back games with no touchdowns. Uh, is that concerning? Sure. But this past week against Indianapolis's defense, of course, one of the tougher ones in the National Football League, he had 19 carries for 103 rushing yards. That can't be understated. Of course, the offense, handing the ball off to John o. Smith, passing the ball to Devont- Deontay Foreman on the goal line, that's going to hurt. Of course, that's going to hurt. But I think, again, eventually he's going to get back to what he does best, which is running the ball and finding the end zone. He had five games in a row already this season in which he scored a touchdown. So he'll get back to that. Baltimore, we've seen him dominate before. Just this past week, Sunday Night Football, the New England Patriots exposed that defense for what they are. They cannot stop the run, especially when Calais Campbell is out. I think, of course, Derrick Henry, this Tennessee Titans team, they got to get back to the fundamentals. Run the ball, establish themselves there, hit play action. I think that's what they're going to do. They did it to them in the playoffs. I think they're going to get back to dominating on the ground. Derrick Henry is my number five. We move on to our number six. We have ourselves DeAndre Swift. Now, a lot of people may be thinking, how is DeAndre Swift up here? I talked about this on Sunday morning, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time kickoff with Kirikoff Week 11 for those of you who are interested in joining us this upcoming Sunday morning. We mentioned this. A lot of people were asking me, Andrew, um, what is the potential of DeAndre Swift? I said, now that he is getting his starting role and they've officially named him the starter for this week, He could easily take the role, and if in fact he wins it, and he doesn't Jonathan Taylor the job, he could honestly be a top 12 back. And he absolutely, you know, not only produced in showing that he's a top 12 back, but convinced me far and away that, especially this upcoming week, should be able to take care of this incredible matchup. He plays against the Carolina Panthers, the fourth most points to opposing running backs. As of right now, DeAndre Swift is the number 14 overall back in fantasy in a half PPR setting. A lot of people may not have seen that coming, but it obviously has to do with the fact that he's getting opportunity and obviously producing on it. In the last week, 16 carries, 81 yards, but the biggest difference is you needed another receiving back for Matthew Stafford. Again, many of us remember a couple years back, Theo Riddick was the go-to in the passing game and was a monster in the backfield, was as good as what J.D. McKissick is right now. 
Swift had five total targets, leading to five receptions, 68 yards, and a receiving touchdown for 23.4 points. Again, as of right now, the number 14 overall back since week six coming back from the bye week has been the number four overall running back in fantasy. He's unstoppable right now, and in a matchup against Carolina, I just can't imagine him not dominating. Uh, with more and more workload going his direction, 20 plus touches consistently getting there, I'm excited about his potential the rest of the way. I'm glad he's finally getting his full opportunity, which we anticipated him getting, but now it's finally time for him to win the job outright uh, going forward. And of course, leave Adrian Peterson and carry on Johnson on the bench. We have Cream Hunt as my number seven. Again, I anticipated Cream Hunt to play well this past weekend because of the Houston matchup. And to be honest, I think he's probably going to play well again this week, uh, mainly because of the fact that he's still getting opportunity. He had 19 total touches on the ground for 104 yards, four targets, three catches, 28 yards through the air. Didn't find himself in the end zone, but found himself being still a relevant fantasy option based on receptions and yards and total touches. Again, if he's going to touch the ball more than Nick Chubb, that is not a surprise. He is a multifaceted back and the guy that they want on third down. And especially down in the red zone, if they have to pass, he's a guy that is obviously going to take advantage of it. I think, of course, the Philadelphia Eagles, they themselves haven't been playing the greatest offensively. With that current momentum, the Eagles could start slow. It could lead to the Cleveland Browns getting more and more opportunities in the first half, taking a lead and running out the clock in the second half. I think Kareem Hunt, as long as he's getting carries, touches, He's going to be relevant. He'll eventually find himself in the end zone, finding himself that much more relevant in fantasy. Our number eight for this week is Miles Sanders. And I think though the Philadelphia Eagles were a great offense this past week in terms of running the ball, they ditched it far too early. I know they took uh, a little bit of a deficit early, but they were averaging over five yards per carry. I mean, Miles Sanders, 15 total carries, 85 yards. It just makes me think that this offense, they don't want to run the ball. I, I don't get it personally because they want to be a pass first offense. And yeah, they have relevant weapons to do so, but I really think their strongest suit is running the ball. And hopefully they'll go back to that. I think if the weather is bad in Cleveland, they'll have to commit to the run, which will obviously show them that that's their strong suit with, of course, Miles Sanders. And then, of course, a little bit of sprinkles of Boston Scott taking a huge run to the house. I mean, as of right now, it just seems to me that Miles Sanders is back. He had himself a good game, 95 total yards, uh, two catches. So again, 17 touches, it's going to go in the right direction as long as they continue to build the momentum. I think he had himself a really good game in this upcoming week, could take advantage of a matchup, though it's not the greatest, could still end up being a great play based on all of the uh, outlying variables that, of course, whether um, the how close the game is in terms of overall score and then this offense may be trying to commit more to the running game this upcoming week. And of course, having a healthy offensive line just seems like they should be running the ball. Number nine for this week is Aaron Jones. And, and though Aaron Jones is in a tougher matchup against the Indianapolis Colts, we've seen that it's not out in the realm of possibility that a running back can produce against them. I mean, Derrick Henry, of course, had 103 rushing yards on 19 carries. So again, if you're going to average over five yards per carry against that defense, I think anybody can do it. But the question is going to remain, where are we going to see the production of Aaron Jones take us? Like, is he going to find himself in the end zone? Because just this past week, he did not find himself in the end zone. He caught the ball five times for 49 yards, had himself 46 rushing uh, yards on 13 attempts. And though those receptions and those receiving yards definitely saved this week, the, the question is going to be, what Aaron Jones are we going to see? Are, they, are we going to see the one that is going to catch the ball like that and not find the end zone? Or are we going to see the one that eventually finds the end zone and becomes a top three potential play this week? I think either way, you got to trust in Aaron Jones. I personally do, even with more and more utilization of Jamal Williams. I think that just gives more of a breather for Aaron Jones. We know he's the goal line back. He's not going to get his touches taken there. Uh, those kind of options are not going to be siphoned away from him. So I think, of course, as long as he continues to play, stay healthy. I'm excited about him this upcoming week. Number 10 for this week is Antonio Gibson. Now, Antonio Gibson is coming off of another great game, uh, and this has kind of been a reoccurring thing for him. Again, as of right now, Antonio Gibson has seven rushing touchdowns. Those seven rushing touchdowns have definitely lifted his overall fantasy value as he is currently the number 11 overall back in a happy PR setting. Again, this was a guy that in the offseason, a lot of people were questioning whether or not this offense is going to give him the opportunity. And though he is not getting all of the passing work, though there are some touchdowns taken from him by J.D. McKissick, he has still been a relevant back, catching the ball four times on four targets, 20 yards, 45 rushing yards, two rushing touchdowns. I think overall, he could get more opportunity. The matchup against the Cincinnati Bengals, in my opinion, is a pretty easy one. I don't really think that this is one that 
You should be avoiding for Antonio Gibson. He is on a hot streak. He is scoring consistent touchdowns. He is the goal line back. And it just seems to me that on a consistent basis, as long as he is getting the ample amount of touches, which just this past week was 17, I'll take that any day of the week. It just seems like he's an automatic play every single time out, even with an offense that may not be winning games or may not be scoring a lot. He is continuously the consistent part of it. Him, Terry McLaurin, in my opinion, and even J.D. McKissick have benefited um, in terms of fantasy productivity by the presence of Alex Smith in the last two weeks. So that's exciting to see. And I think going forward, as long as Alex Smith gets more and more experience, could lead to more success for this offense. And they're, of course, threats like Antonio Gibson. We have James Robinson as our number 11. They take on Pittsburgh. It's tough. It it really is. I, I know James Robinson coming off of a week with 109 rushing yards. Two catches for three yards, that's not great. But again, um, getting receptions, regardless of whether you get yards for it, doesn't matter. I'm okay with it, Uh, as long as they're getting him utilization there. If he finds himself in the end zone against Pittsburgh, then he could be a great back. But he's coming off of three back-to-back games of 99-plus rushing yards, and I don't think he'll be able to eclipse that amount against Pittsburgh. I'm hoping he does so, and I think he's talented enough of a running back, but I think that offense is definitely going to struggle, and it's going to be tough for them to run the ball in the second half when they're down so many points. But then again, the Jacksonville Jaguars did compete against the Packers. They could maybe you know, throw uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers for a loop somehow, some way this week. But either way, James Robinson, a very talented back, and one that regardless of the matchup, I have to start him because he's just one of my studs. Zeke Elliott is our number 12 for this week, and Though I've talked about Zeke Elliott saying that I'm completely off the train, I want to give him one more shot, mainly because of the matchup. I don't mind playing against Minnesota's defense. I I think Minnesota's defense, especially with the return of Andy Dalton, could see some more utilization and more opportunities for Zeke because the last time we saw Andy Dalton with Zeke, Zeke had 10 total targets and 8 receptions against the Arizona Cardinals. Half PPR, full PPR, does not matter. That is a lot of points to be had so if in fact this team who has been giving him the ball progressively more and more as the last couple weeks 18 rushing attempts 19 rushing attempts has been preparing for this Minnesota matchup for the last two weeks now if they can go into this game and end up at least having somewhat of a good performance taking advantage of the fact that Minnesota's secondary isn't great unfortunately the Bears couldn't do that last night but if in fact they could take advantage of it and open up more opportunities for Zeke I think this team could find some success, and I'm not going to completely shut the door on him this week. This is his final opportunity. Mike Davis is our number 13 for this week, and mainly because, of course, the matchup. He has the easiest matchup on the week playing against the defense that gives up the most points to opposing running backs thus far this season on average in a half PPR scoring format. As of right now, the crazy stat for Mike Davis isn't that, yeah, Mike Davis didn't play well last week. He only had 11 touches. That's fine. They got blown out. It was just a completely different contest, and he wasn't expected to do much. Um, But again, playing against the Detroit Lions, Detroit has given up 11 touchdowns in the last four games to running backs. That stat in itself just makes me confident enough in Mike Davis, and of course, maybe even Curtis Samuel to run for a touchdown. I don't know if Teddy Bridgewater is going to play. I know he's dealing with a knee injury. They could end up putting in the backup quarterback. Um, But you know, regardless of that, They're going to have to run the ball, and they're going to have to run the ball consistently against Detroit. I think they'll be able to do so. We've seen Mike Davis be a very capable back. I know he's he's on a little bit of a tilt or slide downhill as of the last four to five weeks, but hopefully he can reclaim himself and establish himself as a top back. That is why he sits as my number 13 for this week, of course, based on the matchup and potential opportunity this week. We have Damian Harris as number 14. He he had a monster week. We talked about it yesterday in terms of waiver wire pickups. He's a guy that should have been picked up many weeks ago based off of the game uh, that he had against Kansas City. If he can go ahead and run the ball consistently enough to where he's getting 20 plus touches and getting, you know, potential goal line work. I know Cam Newton steals it all. He could be relevant, but playing against Houston, averaging what, giving up 154 yards per game to opposing running backs. They just gave up two 100 yard running backs in Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb this past week. It just seems like Damian Harris, an automatic play because no one else is impeding in his touches and he's getting a lot of points. Todd Gurley is our number 15 for this week. And, and even though Todd Gurley has a tougher matchup, the New Orleans Saints, they don't give up a lot of points to opposing running backs. That is a fact. They don't give up touchdowns. They don't give up yards. But the thing about Todd Gurley that makes him a relevant back this year and the fact that he's in the top 10 running backs in terms of total fantasy points is nine rushing touchdowns. Now, based on the matchup, you may think, hey, you know what? I'm not going to touch Todd Gurley. He's not going to score. But to be honest, I think the likelihood of him scoring 
is pretty much up there. Now, this is why. Mainly because in every single game this year, at least, he's averaged at least one touchdown. That's great. The games in which he doesn't score a touchdown, of course, he hasn't been fantasy relevant. And we're trying to avoid that, and we're going to hope that does not happen. But I think because of the New Orleans secondary not being one of the greatest, and Matt Ryan coming out, getting Calvin Ridley back, having Julio on a heater... I think there's a very good chance that this team could get down into the red zone and give Todd Gurley the opportunity. Now, the thing that I went and I wanted to check out was what has Todd Gurley done against New Orleans in his career? And in the last three games that he played against them with the Rams, he's had three touchdowns, in, one touchdown in every single game in the last three matchups. And at least two of them had over 64 rushing yards. So again, the opportunity for him to get over 10 points is there. He's just got to find himself in the end zone. I think he'll get it there. I think he's going to be a relevant back. Of course, we got to believe in our studs. Todd Gurley, though he wasn't expected to be one in the offseason, has definitely become one this year. Number 16 is Giovanni Bernard. Okay, so here's the thing. I know Giovanni Bernard disappointed against Pittsburgh, but I thought he'd get the ball more in the passing game. Uh, the fact that he only caught the ball four times for 17 yards was a little bit of a surprise. He did get seven targets, eight rushing attempts for 30 yards. To be honest, I think that he's on the right track playing against Washington this week. Of course, we just saw... Uh, DeAndre Swift torched them, whether it was on the ground or through the air. I don't know if Joe Mixon's going to play. I'm leaning that he's probably not going to. If he does, then he can go ahead and take this spot immediately because I think Joe Mixon will come in and touch the ball 20 times if they believe he's ready to go. So I think regardless of who's the starting running back of the Bengals this week, I think the Washington matchup is favorable enough in which you can find a lot of relevant fantasy uh, potential there. Again, let's not forget, I know Pittsburgh was a tough matchup, but the two games prior where Giovanni Bernard started as the lone back. He had scored, what, like 18 and 20 points in those two games um, separate. So again, he has touchdown upside. He will get his PPR usage, and he will be a relevant back. And that is why I have confidence in him as my number 16. Number 17 is Ronald Jones. And though he had an incredible week, uh, what was it, a 98-yard rushing touchdown? It just seems to me that I don't know what to expect from this backfield. One week it's Fournette, one week it's Ronald Jones. One week it's Fournette. I mean, let's think about it this way. The two weeks prior to week 10, Ronald Jones had, I think, 11 total rushing attempts in the two games combined. And in just this past week has 23 rushing attempts. Maybe it's because he had already been transitioned to the backup running back and they were winning by a lot. So it was similar to what in week two Leonard Fournette did as the backup running back then. He took over and ran for a lot of yards in the second half. I don't know. It just seems to me that this is such a volatile backfield that whatever, I'm just going to roll with Ronald Jones this week against the Los Angeles Rams. It's not one of the better matchups to say the least, but if he's going to be the goal line guy and he's going to have his opportunities here and there to touch the ball a lot on the ground, then I'll trust him and I'll give him the opportunity to start on my team. He's my number 17 this week. I'm impressed with his performance. I just don't trust Bruce Arians in this offense giving him more and more opportunity, even though he deserves it. He deserved it after he got three consecutive 100-yard rushing games earlier this year when Leonard Fournette was out. They then took the job away from him and gave it to Fournette, which is unfortunate. Hopefully, that performance gave Ronald Jones more and more confidence with the coaching staff going forward. Number 18 for this week is Kenyon Drake. Uh, him coming back from injury as soon as he did, fantastic. Him running for 100 yards, great. He's the number seven rusher in the National Football League, having missed already a game. That is a very good sign. The fact he's running the ball at least 16 times per game on the ground on average, another great sign. He could potentially find the end zone. Of course, Kyler Murray steals all those. But the fact that he's getting opportunity makes me think that he could break off a run against Seattle, giving up the 12th most points to opposing running backs this season. Gives me confidence. I think Kenny Drake could be a good play this week. Again, on Thursday night, short week, the defense of Seattle might not be recovering You know, after taking that L. Uh, by my Los Angeles Rams. I think Kenny Drake's not a bad play this week. Number 19 is James Conner. And as of right now, I'm thinking to myself, of course, James Conner has the potential to come out and play well, but he hasn't been given a lot of opportunity. I think 13 rushing attempts is not enough. 36 yards, not great. He doesn't have burst. I, I'm literally watching him on a play in which the Pittsburgh offensive line opens up a gaping hole that you could fit a semi-truck literally horizontally through it. And guess what? Not happening. He, he's barely getting himself 15 yards on that play, which any other running back in the NFL could have potentially gone to the house. So again, it's really unfortunate that we haven't seen a lot of burst or potential from James Conner. He plays against the sixth best matchup, giving up what the six most points to opposing running backs to Jacksonville Jaguars. Just seems to me that James Conner is kind of little by little as of the weeks have progressed, been fizzled out of this offense. 
uh, as they just throw the ball as consistently as they have. Uh, I think James Conner, though he was a better option in the past, right now kind of falling into uh, the wrong side of my graces, to say the very least. Uh, Kalen Balaj is my number 20. Um, here's the thing. Kalen Balaj is a starting running back. He's going to get the ball upwards of 15 times. They play against the New York Jets. It is a revenge game. It just seems like he's going to score. Now, if he scores, he could be even better than number 20. If he doesn't like this past week, I think his utilization in the passing game and the willingness for this Chargers offense to just pass the ball to whoever their starting running back is, is unbelievable. That is why I'm so hyped about Austin Eckler's return. But regardless, Kalen Balaj has truly proven that it doesn't matter what you look like on the Jets, it really matters what you look like on another team. Because if you're associated with Adam Gase, you're probably not going to be the better running back. That's why we honestly thought Kalen Blodge was awful because he was associated with a guy that just didn't give him the ball enough and didn't give him ample opportunities. Now that he's with an offense that really has gotten him the ball in advantageous positions, he's he's producing out of his mind. Uh, J.D. McKissick's my number 21. I, I really do anticipate a lot of touches. I mean, mainly because of the fact that he's had 29 targets in the last two games. Those numbers are going to always go in his direction, uh, especially in a PPR sense. If he's going to score touchdowns, that's great. I don't think he will. He had eight rushing attempts for six yards. That's not great. He is a receiving back through and through. Plays against Cincinnati. I think that's a fine matchup there. Because honestly, it's only going to take his PPR game, whether it's receptions and yards, to get him over the hump of 10 points. And once he does that, everything else is gravy for you. So again, another one of these great RB2 flex options this upcoming week. We have Salvon Ahmed. Again, uh, Miles Gaskin probably won't return until a couple weeks. Um, as Ahmed definitely took over the starting running back job this past week with 21 carries for 85 yards and a touchdown uh, playing against Denver this week. We've talked about it multiple times. Denver cannot stop the run, whether it's Josh Jacobs, Devontae Booker, Todd Gurley, Justin Jackson, Tremaine Pope, Clyde edwards helaire I'm looking at performances that they, I mean, like Clyde Edwards, 46 yards and a touchdown. Justin Jackson went for 89 through on the ground, 53 through the air, while Tremaine Pope went for 67 on the ground, 28 through the air. Todd Gurley went for 53 and a touchdown while Brian Hill had 24 yards out of nowhere. Josh Jacobs, 112. Uh, Devontae Burker had 81. Both those guys had a touchdown minimum. So again, they can't really stop the run. Their offense is killing them. They're not going to have most likely Drew Locke there. I don't know how that offense is going to look. It could lead to you know the other teams getting the possession more and just running it down their throats in the second half. And I think Salvan Ahmed in the Miami offense could end up doing that. He had a great week. And I think he'll continue to build upon that and take care of his opportunity. Duke Johnson is my number 23. I know he didn't play well, uh, but that's mainly because he didn't get work in the passing game. I think against New England, who has shown that they have been giving up a lot of points to opposing running backs, we will see more utilization out of Duke Johnson. I think 14 carries is great. The yardage on those carries were not great. I mean, that's two weeks in a row when she's averaging like three yards per carry. That's not great numbers, but... I'm anticipating it goes in his direction. I'm anticipating he'll get the ball more. He'll get more utilization in the passing game with a little bit of a better weather condition. Uh, and in that could be a valuable prospect as a top 23 back. Again, I honestly see him as a similar value play as David Johnson with more upside for, of course, receiving plays leading to more success uh, because I do think he's the better receiving back of the two. Uh, but regardless, Duke Johnson is my number 23. 24 is Clyde edwards Um my only issue with Clyde is his lack of touches. I mean, in the last three weeks, on the ground in terms of rushing attempts, eight, six, and five. Um, those are not good enough. That's not going to cut it, especially with Le'Veon in the backfield. It just concerns me more and more. But I'm going to just kind of throw something out. They play against Las Vegas, the fifth best matchup. They give the fifth most points, two opposing running backs. Beautiful. I'll take it any given week. But I had a little bit of an inclination that... Perhaps this is similar to how Kareem Hunt was treated in his rookie year. Now, I was a Kareem Hunt owner back in 2017. He won me multiple championships after picking him up off waivers regardless. From weeks 6 through 12 of Kareem Hunt's rookie year with Andy Reid, Andy Reid kind of like pulled him back and said, hey, you know what, we're going to take it easy with you. He didn't score touchdowns for that full six-week block. But then when the fantasy playoffs came around, weeks 13, 14, and 15, they went back to feeding him 20-plus touches a game. So maybe this is a thing in which they're trying to continue to do this where they kind of, you know, okay, rookie, we're just going to relax. We're going to pull you back a little bit, take it easy with you. And then once we get to games later in the season, in the winter, where it's harder to throw the ball, then we'll go ahead 
and just run the rock with you and go ahead and feed you the ball. Hopefully, they can do it against the Las Vegas Raiders. I know he's scoring still nearly 10 points a game, but he's got to score touchdowns to be relevant. And it's tough to see if he's going to score a touchdown, especially with so many threats in that offense, all scoring on a weekly basis. Naeem Hines is my number 25. Uh, Again, Naeem Hines should be the starting back. Just based off of pure production, he has been the most relevant back on that team uh, this season. I mean, even with Jonathan Taylor having a couple good games, Naeem Hines could probably have done the same. I am 100% on the train where they should just give him all of the touches from here on out. Um, They probably won't, and that's fine. But as long as he gets PPR work, as long as he gets touches on the ground, I mean, he had 12 carries for 70 yards against Tennessee. He'll definitely be able to produce similar numbers against Green Bay of all teams. So I really do think that Naeem Hines coming off a week where he scored two touchdowns, five catches, 45 yards, 70 on the ground for 26 fantasy points. I think he was the number three overall back this past week. It just seems like it's an automatic play for him to continue to get the touches and of course, more fantasy relevance. Rex Burkhead is our number 26. And as of right now, I I think the Houston matchup, of course, they give up the second most points to opposing running backs this season. It's fantastic. I know he only touched the ball 10 times, but regardless of whether this matchup goes in the right direction or wrong direction, it is in the favor of Rex Burkhead. On one hand, they could be running the ball consistently down Houston's throat, and it could definitely allow more and more touches for Rex Burkhead to succeed again last week, averaging five yards per carry against Baltimore. This upcoming week, if in fact it goes the completely opposite way and they're down and they have to come back in the game, Rex Burkhead is the receiving back. Five targets, four receptions, 35 yards, and had himself... Two receiving touchdowns. So again, regardless of whether this matchup goes in one way or the other, he seems to be matchup proof and he's going to get his touches and his potential opportunity, which will lead to fantasy success here. Alex Collins is my number 27. I mentioned him in the earlier half of the episode because again, uh, he's going to probably be the starter with Chris Carson potentially out. If Chris Carson plays, then Chris Carson can easily be a top 15 back. But again, as Alex Collins is probably a guy that a lot of us are familiar with back in the day he used to be a uh, Baltimore Raven a running back of course he's wearing the purple jersey on screen uh, but the question is what are we going to anticipate from him if he can touch the ball upwards of 11 to 15 times he could easily score himself a touchdown be a 10 plus point play on this given week on a short week in in my opinion uh, Alex Collins is pretty fresh in comparison to other running backs he just got signed um, you know so it, it just seems to me that If they're ready to just plug him in and continuously get him the ball, he could be a viable option this week. Uh, Chase Edmonds at 28. I think that Chase Edmonds' success against the Seattle Seahawks in that fourth quarter slash overtime um, will will not go unnoted by the Arizona Cardinals offense and offensive coordinator. They're definitely going to be like, all right, Chase Edmonds definitely worked. We got him the ball a lot through the passing game in that game, especially in the fourth and overtime. We're going to probably have to go back into that well feed the ball to him because they cannot cover backs out of the backfield and just feed him the ball there. I know Chase Edmonds this past week, eight total rushing attempts, 56 yards. That's a pretty good yard per carry average. Three carry, oh, sorry, three receptions on three targets for 21 yards. Had 9.2 fantasy points and he only had 11 touches. I think that in itself, on top of the fact that this is a matchup that he has succeeded against, just seems to me that they're going to continue to go back to Chase Edmonds and use both these running backs uh, and find some success there. Melvin Gordon is our number 29. Again, I'm losing hope in the backfield for Denver. I'm going to hope that maybe uh, Melvin Gordon can be relevant playing against Miami. It's one of the easier matchups on the ground. Perhaps he'll go ahead and take advantage of it. If he goes ahead and does so, again, the Miami Dolphins, they're giving up a lot of points to opposing running backs, but it's a matter of whether or not Melvin Gordon is going to get the opportunity to do so. If they can stay in the game and compete, then Melvin Gordon can easily have himself a game there. It's just a matter of whether or not they can get over the hump. Uh, Leonard Fournette, again, if Ronald Jones is going to be the starting guy and Leonard Fournette's going to be the third down back, then so be it. Let us know that. And Leonard Fournette will have PPR value going forward. Outside of that, he will get a couple touches here and there, maybe the upside of a touchdown, but evidently will just be the PPR guy. And I'm perfectly fine with that, just as long as we know for sure that that's the rule. If he comes out and carries the ball more than Ronald Jones this week, then I'm I'm just done. You know, I'm done with it. So hopefully that's not the case. But again, just understand that as a potential possibility for this upcoming week. Gus the Bus Edwards is our number 31. And like I was mentioning with Melvin Gordon and or Leonard Fournette, maybe if in fact we wanted to get more utilization out of, you know, Gus Edwards and just give him all the touches, then he could be a great back, especially in the Ravens offense that, you know, they know how to run the ball. They, they truly do. 
but they just don't know how to give it to one singular back. They're just like allergic to having a singular back touch the ball. Their starting running back is Lamar Jackson. Like that, that's just a fact. And unfortunately, Gus Edwards is going to suffer because of it. He still had himself a decent game uh, with seven carries for 42 yards. That's six yards per carry and one catch for 31 yards. Again, it's against Tennessee, eighth most points to opposing running backs. They're not going to give him all the touches. And that's why he sits at 31 because, yeah, he has the upside of a touchdown, but Lamar might even take that. Malcolm Brown. Tampa Bay is a little bit of a tough matchup. Of course, they give up the fewest amount of yards to opposing running backs this season. But if, in fact, you want to score against Tampa Bay, especially down in the red zone, it's typically on the ground. They've given up their fair share of touchdowns to opposing running backs on the ground. And I think if we're going to talk about the goal line back of this team, it is far and away Malcolm Brown. Uh, he had two rushing touchdowns just this past Sunday on total of six carries. That's not a lot of carries, but they trust him to be the goal line back. If that's the case, he could be fantasy relevant in that sense. Joshua Kelly is my number 33, mainly because uh, if they're going to play against the Jets, the, the Los Angeles Chargers, they're probably going to blow them out. And if that's the case, uh, late in the game, it's not going to always be Kalen Blosh. They're going to bring in the second string running back, who will be Joshua Kelly, even though he is averaging three yards per carry, could fall in the end zone, find himself relevance there. And if that's the case, could be a decent option. Uh, Cam Akers is my number 34. He had himself 11 rushing attempts. More and more opportunity after the bye week is a good sign for the rookie back, but he did not play well. They're losing Andrew Whitworth. Uh, that's going to hurt their offense, and it could hurt Cam Makers in the long run, especially because of the matchup this week. Not as trustworthy, but maybe, in fact, he could break out a huge run and make his week off of one play. Devontae Booker is my number 35, mainly because Devontae Booker has scored a touchdown in each of the last two weeks. And to be honest, the plays that he is in, they're one of the more better designed plays that I've seen that the, the Raiders have run. I mean, I think to myself, why don't they let Josh Jacobs run that play? Like, he could have just been as successful, but I'm not going to complain. I think Devontae Booker is a good play. Um, to be honest, he's a backup running back, so you shouldn't expect a lot. But considering he's getting ample touches uh, and the Raiders are probably going to want to run the ball, uh, a pretty decent amount against the Kansas City Chiefs in order to keep the ball away from, of course, Patrick Mahomes. It should be a pretty decent play. And, of course, you can tell how you know thin the running back position is in the 30s as we get to Michael P. Ryan as our number 36. I know Frank Gore is currently the starter. They've been talking about getting P. Ryan more and more touches after the bye week. Now it's your time, Adam Gase. Feed him the ball playing against Los Angeles Chargers. I think the Los Angeles Chargers, they're giving up the 11th most points to opposing running backs this season. Could be a very good option there for that team. Okay, those are my top 36 running back rankings for week 11 of the 2020 fantasy football season. Tomorrow, we'll talk about wide receivers. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Click the subscribe button. Click, click the bell notification button to stay up to date on my latest content. And make sure you click the like button. Comment down below. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And until tomorrow, I'll see you guys. Peace. Thank you.